In the name of Jesus, the Christ, the Word made flesh, and today the mystery revealed. Amen. Now in the Gospel reading for today, we heard of the wise men that they entered into the house and they saw the child and Mary his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. And some translations even say they fell down on their knees and worshipped him. Now here's the epiphany that I had just this last week. One of my favorite hymns is Holy God, We Praise Your Name, or Holy God, We Praise Thy Name. And it never dawned on me until this week I had the epiphany that in the fourth stanza, the last two lines are, And adoring bend the knee while we own the mystery. Right, we own the mystery. Now, the book of mysteries, if you are in a mystery series, They contain a well-written, well-crafted, and thoughtful portrayals of its main characters and plots. What makes all mystery series so intriguing is the process of attempting to solve the plot and understand the main point. Normally, there is a dramatic revealing of the characters at the end of the episode and oft-times catches the reader off guard. It's a surprise. For the human race, understanding the plan of God has always been a great struggle, a great mystery. But now, at the right time, the great mystery God kept hidden has been revealed to us in his Son, Jesus Christ. And that's the message of Epiphany. The mystery revealed. God the Father utilized direct promises throughout the Old Testament prophets, and then in live action to the patriarchs as they moved about, Abraham, and then Joseph and Jacob, as well as symbols and visual aids of all the temple worship and the sacrificial system to give us clues to the ultimate mystery of the salvation of the human race. Yet for the world, the work and will of the Father was still a mystery, And for many, the traditions and the message of a Savior were mysteries that were hidden. St. Paul writes in the lesson for today, When you read this, you can perceive my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was not made known to the sons of men in other generations. The story was written by and carried out in the life of the Israelites, the Jewish people. In fact, The promises were directly connected to the genealogy of David. Therefore, to be part of the promise fulfilled must have been a dream of every young Jewish girl, believing that she could be the main character in the mystery of the world's salvation. But of course, she very likely assumed that the salvation was only for the people of Israel, God's people, the Israelites, who had the clues, assumed that salvation was forever to remain a mystery to all other nations. It was theirs, mine. Didn't belong to anybody else. Strangers in Babylon and Persia, forget about it. Ancients in India, China, or Japan, not for them this plan of salvation. Moderns, not unless you can trace your lineage back to Judah or Dan or Issachar or Naphtali. And where do you sit? In the dark? Clueless? Is eternal life a total mystery to you? Now it's getting personal, and the stakes could not be higher. Unlike mystery novels of today that a clever reader might figure out, the story of Christ was guaranteed to remain a mystery until God himself revealed it. Even Paul, chief apostle to the Gentiles in the reading recounts the importance of the mystery being revealed to him by the Father. This revelation was not necessarily hidden, a hidden reality. It was one that was spoken about, but in many cases people just did not believe it. Humankind has taken the approach 
that on our own we can do great things. We can do great things for ourselves, even to the point of today, we don't need a God. And man, try as he might, foolishly proud as he is, may be, and has always been failing ever since. It's no mystery that humankind is desperately in need of a savior and a king. People have ignored the mysteries of God and his promises throughout the entirety of the Bible and throughout the history of mankind. But the plan of salvation has not changed from the first time the Father made the promise to Adam and Eve in the garden. The mystery was set in motion at the time when women would experience pain in childbearing and man would graze his food by the sweat of his brow, all the punishment of sin. As in all mysteries, the plot becomes clearer and clearer as time goes on and the story unfolds. Characters and people in the mystery emerge and stand out. And in the case of the Father's great mystery, throughout the pages of Scripture, Jesus comes on the scene very late. Or in theatrical terms, the star doesn't show up until the second act. Act 1 is the Old Testament. Act 2 is the New Testament. But he immediately becomes the leading actor and main player in the plot of the world's story. The apostle reminds us clearly that in Christ, the Father has brought forth the clear truth of his will and plan, which has been hidden in the ages. Jesus now has come, and as the light of the world, he has broken through the darkness. Now, St. Paul is the instrument of the Father that the Father is using to communicate his message and to decode his mystery to the world. This mystery is not one that is to be forever kept secret, nor was the mystery something that the Father intended to keep quiet once the moment of the revealing had occurred. And just what is that mystery? St. Paul tells us. This mystery is that the Gentiles are fellow heirs, members of the same body, and partakers of the promise in Christ through the gospel. This message was formerly a Jewish message, and one that was connected to their lineage and their heritage. Now, Paul is making it clear that the revelation is the Gentiles, that the Gentiles are just as much a part of the gospel message as the Jews. That Jesus is the centerpiece of salvation and forgiveness for all people from now until he returns and on into eternity. This is the message of epiphany. This is why God put a star in the sky that the Gentile wise men could see and follow. This is why those men from Babylon or Persia or from wherever they came could come and worship the king of the Jews because God had now revealed that he wasn't only the king of the Jews, he was the king of all. There is to be no mystery about the world savior, Jesus Christ. And the eternal plan of God is that all people should be saved through Jesus Christ. His perfect life, his innocent death, and his triumphant resurrection. This message and revelation of the mystery of God is now unfolded and decoded so that you and I might have confidence and assurance that the word is true and the message is no longer hidden from the ages long ago. So now Paul says in the lesson again, you and I have boldness to access with confidence through our faith in him. See where this puts you? No longer distant from God, you have access to him through the reconciling blood of Jesus Christ. You have access to the throne of his grace, knowing that when you pray, he hears us for Jesus' sake. We have access to him and to every blessing he willingly wants to give us. And having access to this mystery revealed, you and I are now to proclaim it. The Father desires the story of Jesus to be told and shared. We are asked by our Lord to share the good news with all with whom we come in contact, 
so that they all learn that we are saved by grace, through faith, God's plan. All now have access to the Father through Jesus Christ. I've used this illustration before. There is a Bedouin desert proverb that says, if you know where the water is, blessed are you. If you know where the water is and you don't tell anyone, cursed are you. And the mystery of God becomes clear for the world through you and me. We are called to proclaim, to live and declare the message of the gospel to all people. Like Paul, you and I have been given clarity of the gospel, clarity of the message that God has called us to share with all generations, all people, starting right in our own homes. So, included in the various inserts within the messenger for this day, there is the blessing of a home. It's on the flip side of the alert uh, announcement. Homes may be blessed annually, and there are more extravagant uh, orders, but I gave you this just so that each one could take it home and bless the home that the Lord has given you. There is a psalm, there's an invocation, there's a psalm, there's a prayer, the dedication, and then the closing prayer, asking God to bless and keep you safe throughout this year. Like the wise men who came from afar to visit this mystery made flesh, you and I now come to kneel before the Savior. And you will do that today, right? When you come to partake of the sacrament. Adoring him, bend the knee. You are able to see the mystery now made flesh that was hidden from the ages past. We see the light of the world in the form of the Son of God, and we are able to see him clearly. Give thanks and praise to the Lord that you have now the ability to understand and explain to others the mysteries that have been hidden. This is the good news for those who call themselves children of the light, those to whom the mystery is revealed. Amen. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in the love of Christ until the day you see him face to face in heaven. Amen.